What's up everybody? Logan Kidder here today. So uh, we're going to be doing a little bit different, taking a break from hunting. Got a lot of things to do here around the farm to get ready for winter. Um, one of the big projects this fall leading into the winter is I got this old snow plow. Now this snow plow goes on a truck that we use for hauling water around the farm or whatever. It's, it's old, it's worn out, the truck doesn't need a plow on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut everything off of this plow blade that is used to mount it and run it on a truck. And I'm gonna turn this plow into a push box that we can put on the front of the skid steer to better and more efficiently plow the driveway with the skid steer. So I'll uh, take you guys through the process. Maybe it's something you're interested in. You know, Maybe it's something you got some old junk laying around at home you wanna build a push box of your own for something. So stick around and follow me through the process. All right, so as you can see, there is all kinds of stuff stuck to the back side of this plow. Um, basically, it's the frame, the motor, the cylinders, the trip springs. It's everything that's essential to running a plow with a pickup truck. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and strip all that stuff off the back of the blade. We will be saving um, probably the trip springs, the motor, the cylinder for the raise and lower, the cylinders for swinging side to side or rotted out their junk. Um, and we'll also be saving the wiring because I do have an identical plow like this that in the near future, I'm probably gonna set up on one of my pickup trucks. So for now, we're just building the push box. We're gonna get this thing stripped down. I'll uh, show you guys how I go about it. I'm gonna be using just a DeWalt 60 volt grinder and a set of oxyacetylene torches. So stick around. step is we've got to cut out 10 inch long pieces of this square tubing to weld to the back of the plow blade essentially to make a pocket to slide the cutting edge of the skid steer bucket into so that way it stays on the bucket <clears throat> you can control the pitch of your plow blade by rolling your bucket back and forth you can raise it and lower it of course we're going to have some safety chains on the top to secure it onto the bucket so you don't drop it off. But like I said, next step, we're gonna cut up some pieces of this square tube. We're gonna get them welded onto the back of this blade. And after that, we're gonna get the skid steer in here and uh, lift this thing up so we can do the rest of the work we gotta do. Catch you in a minute. And do some finish welds on them, really lock them in to where they're gonna stick around. So let's do some tack welding.
get to putting some finish welds on these. Right, guys i'm back at it it's uh been a couple days since i was last in here working on it i did do a couple of things that i didn't video just because the same thing gets old i'm not gonna hold you guys up watching hours of time lapses of welding and grinding um one thing i did was if you can see on the bottom of the plow there those brackets that are bolted onto the cutting edge i'll give you a close-up but just quick description i didn't want to run a sharp cutting edge around my house because we have a stone driveway and pushing the snow across the yard that cutting edge tends to tear things up pretty bad um so the fix to that i actually learned from my brother-in-law is i made a pipe that bolts into the same bolts as the cutting edge and basically the plow will be riding on a round two inch steel pipe that is much more forgiving when it comes to stone and grass and mud and everything else that comes along with the winter. Um, so I put the pipe on there. That's the combat, tearing up the driveway, tearing up the yard. Another thing I did on the back where I put the square tubing to put the bucket in on the back of the plow, I cut a 45 degree angle on the bottom pieces of square tubing to give myself a little bit more ground clearance on the bottom side of the bucket. And if you use the back blade to back drag or whatever else, it's also taking away that sharp square edge and sharp square face on the tubing. So you're not, again, you're not tearing up the driveway, you're not tearing up the grass or the mud. You know, you don't want something on there that's gonna dig in. So now it's got a nice swoop on it, 45 degree angle. It should be much more forgiving when we're using it. But I'll show you guys some of the work I did and then tell you what's gonna happen next. Alrighty, so here is the pipe on the cutting edge. You can see I just took some small pieces of C-channel and welded it right to the pipe, drilled holes in it, and bolted it to the cutting edge. Now like I said, uh, it's not quite two inch. It's about an inch and a half pipe. But that just sits below the cutting edge. So that way the plow rides on the pipe and not the sharp cutting edge. The hooks are just sitting on there. I haven't mounted those on yet. That'll be one of the next things we do. Gotta weld these hooks into place because I'm gonna run a chain from there to the bucket and back to the other side. So that way, if you pick it up or you tilt the bucket down or whatever, you don't lose the push block. Here, you can see where I cut the 45s on the bottom pieces of square tubing. Nothing crazy, just burn them out with a torch easy enough so the next big step aside from welding the hooks onto the block is it's not a block yet it's just a snow plow as you see it's just a curved bare snow plow to make it a push block i gotta put sides on it now there's a bunch of different ways you can put sides on it i've seen people make it so you can go from a plow to a push block where you pull the sides out i'm not interested in that it's never gonna be a plow, it's always gonna be a push block. Reason being, I've got way too much snow to move to worry about having a plow. I wanna have the sides on it to catch the windrows that normally would blow off the side of the plow as quickly and efficiently I can clean the driveway, it's better for me. So I'm gonna take the steel plate I got here, and this is eighth inch steel plate and basically cut out two 
rectangle pieces. I got the measurements I already took. They're 26 inches tall by 18 inches wide. And I'm gonna weld those rectangle pieces on the sides, left and right side. Once they're welded on, I'm gonna go ahead and take the torch and just cut off the excess. Um, it's cheating a little bit. I'm not doing all my cutting over on the saw horses. Personally, I think it's gonna be easier for me because being welded to the plow already, I'll know exactly what excess I wanna cut off and how I wanna shape it. So we're gonna go ahead and get to cutting out our sides and move on to welding. got them C-clamped on. They're right where I want them. I'm going to go ahead and tack them in place. One thing I did is I slid a 1 8 piece of steel plate underneath these sides to give it just a little bit of buffer. We don't want the sides touching the ground. We want them close but not touching the ground. We want the cutting edge or the pipe to do the work in that scenario. So we got them spaced up off the floor a little bit. Everything's right about where we want it, including the hooks for our chain. We're going to go ahead and tack everything in place, come back, take a look, make sure everything's where we want it, and then we're going to go ahead and finish weld it all in place. Fairly straightforward. Not a big deal. so they're not so pointy. Well, here it is. This is the snow push box all finished up. 
And just in the nick of time, let me tell you guys, it's freezing here. It was 32 this morning. It's up to 39 now, but we've got some snowflakes in the air and snow in the forecast. <laughs> so, like I said, finished this project up just in the nick of time. We got our first snowflakes of the year flying, and uh, I know what's coming. It's a big weight off my shoulders to get this thing done. I'm super impressed with the way it turned out. I'm really glad that I built it the way I did. It's gonna be a lot more convenient for us to push snow around the farm. Seeing as how we gotta plow this whole barnyard from that barn to the house, all the way back here to the cow barn behind me so we can get to these girls and feed. So we got a lot of snow to move every time we get a storm. So if you guys like what you saw, drop a like, drop a comment. If you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. And if there's something else you're looking to see, let me know. Leave it in the comments. I'll do my best to answer you guys. And uh, have a good one.